All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Really do appreciate y'all checking in. Um, we got a lot of little things to do today. Do a little bit of work on the frame, trying to find the balance point. But first of all, I want to get a lever for these motors done. Okay, so what, I've, what I'm going to be using is this quarter inch flat bar. I got it at Lowe's. So all we need to do is get the angle grinder out or however you want to cut these, measure them up. Uh, two five inch ones and one seven inch one. So let's get this done. All right, so for this flat bar stock, I'm gonna cut it for left and right hand motor. I'm gonna cut it at six inches. And for the traction loss motor, I'm gonna start out at seven and a half inches. Just to get enough, enough length here, um, we're gonna have to make some adjustments on both of these, but this is the raw material, so we're gonna be drilling some holes, attaching them to the, uh, the bolts for the motors and all that stuff. So basically, I want to go center to center at five inches to begin with. It's going to help me uh, line up so I get him in the center. So center to center, five inches. All right, so I'm going to be using some of this cutting oil. And for the uh, seven and a half inch, I didn't, I'm doing the same thing right here. So the way we're cutting these holes, we've got the motor side and we've got the, the tie rod side. Okay, so the motor side is gonna have to be a half inch hole. So you want just a half inch hole on one side of each of these pieces. And then three eighths for the tie rod on each of these. So it takes a little bit to get this done, but drilling half inch holes is probably my least favorite thing to do that just takes a long time so we want to clean these things off really good because we're going to be welding on them um, also one other thing so a good friend of mine saw this and he's like what the heck is that okay so it's actually a Ferrari poster. It's not quite high enough, so I'm gonna move it somewhere else, but that's what that is. Let's clean these things off. We're gonna put these bolts in the motors and uh, kind of get the levers hooked up. Okay, before we get too far along, this is what we wanna end up doing. We wanna end up tapping the end of the half inch bolt um, with a one quarter inch um, tap. So I went ahead and bought this one. It's a quarter inch. You can drill it down to about about here, about an inch or so into the bolt. And on the other side, this is where the potentiometer is going to attach. So you can see the potentiometer spinning and they'll spin all around and around. The potentiometer has a has a sweet spot, a reading spot of only 180 degrees. So it doesn't matter if the motor's turning, half of it won't make a reading at all, and the other half will. So this is just some kind of flexible tubing. I just happen to have some. It's a quarter inch. And so what we're gonna do is hook the, the quarter inch to one side of a quarter inch bolt the other side of the quarter inch bolt is going to go right inside this half inch 
and that's how so we'll tighten this down then we can just slide this we'll have to cut it off but then we can slide the potentiometer on kind of just twist it around until we get a good amount of the tubing on there and if we don't align our holes correctly we can it'll still compensate for it it doesn't take anything to turn this potentiometer it could be way off like this it's turning it and this this uh, flexible tubing is compensating for it so we want to try to get everything straight but you know we're just humans so you know I don't have a lathe or anything so try to find the center of this half inch bolt I'm gonna put the punch on it knock it through and then drill it out and then um, and then tap it we do that for all three motors then we'll insert this this quarter inch uh, bolt we'll screw it down so before I start drilling it I want to seat it in here so I'm gonna put a half inch bolt on put it in here and I'll put a half inch bolt on top and try to center up our bolt That looks like it's going in good. Some of these chunks out of here. So the hole's pretty much lined up. It's just a bit off the center. But now I just need to tap this. You want to be careful with the tap, just in case it breaks. I mean, you'll have to start again, and then you have to buy a new tap. So just go slow, just a little bit at a time. And don't put this one in the drill, because the tap here is actually really thin. And no, I don't have a T-handle. What I got is what I got. And what I got is a vice grip. All right, that's two motors down and one to go. That'll stay in there. Our tubing will go right over the top. I mean, we'll, we'll, we're going to cut this, but so that's two down, one to go. And then we can do something more fun. All right, so let me just cut to that. All right, so I have one of the bolts just laying here. So this is one that's done. You can either clean it up or just leave it like this. As long as it's uh, welded around, all the way around, you'll be fine. For the traction loss side, we want the side with the hole on the motor to be facing down. Um, we're gonna come up with the nut like this, put a nut on top. We'll secure it here All right, and then we got the bolt on top. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how tight you try to get this. What I'm gonna do right now is, is just tack weld right along here real quick, just so that I know it's not gonna come loose. Like, on, like I said on the other rig, I've tightened this thing down real tight. And just because of the torque of the motor, it will just, it will come loose. So you can see you have that hole. We could drill it out and then run a, run a bolt in the middle, but I'm just, I'm just gonna weld it around just cause I don't wanna fool with it. Just remember if you're gonna do that, just do one tack and then clean it or cool it down with a rag. Just wait a minute, do another one, same thing until you get it around because you don't I don't really know what's inside the motor and I don't if it's nylon parts or something like that you don't want to melt them not that difficult to turn but these are 50 to ones the 60 to ones I from what I heard you can't turn them they're just there's just too much uh, too much of a gear in there oh and real quick if you are gonna weld um, you're gonna need to clean the paint off
And you want to do that now before you uh, put the put the bolt because you can't clean the paint off once once the bolt's in. All right, so it's taken a little while, but I got the um, lever arm all tacked around. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. This is secure. I got the bolt here. I got the uh, potentiometer hole here. And now we can uh, measure up for the traction loss. All right, guys. Well, I got everything kind of like up here, just kind of mocked in place. Let me show you real quick. I got this welded around. Oh, man, that's tough. I got the bolt on this side, the hole here for the potentiometer. I'm trying to figure out where to put the motor. So the motor has to clear, um, it has to clear the bottom frame. We're mounting it to the mid frame. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to put it where the U-joint um, should be. You want your traction loss to be centered on the frame. And then you want, you want the tie rod end to push against the bottom frame. All right, so let's take another look. The motor, and I'll take this stuff off so you can see. This U-joint, this is the one that was on the two degree of freedom seat mover. Uh, basically, I had to use it just to see what, I'm, what kind of clearance I'm going to get. Quite heavy for one hand. And as I put the seat on here, I put all the pedals, um, the, 10, the 10 pound steering wheel, and sat in it. I kind of got a, a rough balance point right here between these, right where it's the, the strongest. So this will be one of the U-joint mounts. And then I'll make another one right here. The U-joint will mount right on top of it. And this motor is going to mount basically right here. I'm just going to show you this part from the seat mover. So this would be... Um, I'd have to make two tabs, little things like this, to hold on either side of the tie rod end and attach it to the bottom frame. So take a look at the bottom frame right there. I'm getting this in place. You want a pretty tight fit. So the U-joint itself, what I'm going to do is cut it off of these inch square tubings. So once that's cut off, I'm going to make a plate on top. Probably use two of these. And this plate, this is that um, 3 16 inch steel, so it's really thick. The plate, I'm going to weld it on, but it'll have bolt holes so that we can, you know, have some kind of adjustment um, with the center of balance if we need to. So what I've done is I've marked the center line of both the top frame and the bottom frame. I also made a mark on the U-joint and right here. I'm just gonna line it up, get these things tacked into place. All right guys, so I got the traction loss motor mounted. These are three and a half inch uh, bolts. So I got to make one more here, but for right now, what I want to do is make the tie rod connection. Okay, so for the tie rod connection, it's going to go on the lower frame. So I, I kind of just scratch this out. And I want to make two of them, one for the top and one for the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and Going to do some grind uh, cuttings, a little bit of grinding, and drill a hole. Two of them, they'll mount on either side of the tie rod, on the bottom and the top. And I want to make sure I don't uh, come in contact with that nut. I got the connector done. Bring it up here, put it to 90. I want a little bit of a spacer between 
uh, the bottom of the bolt. And anyway, I just want a little bit of gap down underneath. So I'm just gonna tack this in real quick. And this is at least as much as I wanted to do this weekend. So I may get a little bit more done, but take a look. We got traction loss. Almost go to the end. That's a decent amount of traction loss too. That, that's plenty. So everything seems to be working. See, check it out. Now this is not tight, but, and I still need to re, you know, I just have some tack welds here. But what I'd really like to do, uh, we got, we got a lot of stuff done here. Um, I'd really like to get this frame, some paint on it, and do a little bit of sanding, you know, at least get it into primer. Um, so that's, you know, this is what we needed to get done this week. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding on this thing, get it into primer at least. And that way I'm not thinking about it all the time. Now, if I get it into primer, I'm going to have to grind it off a little bit in the front. That way I can use some of this steel, uh, thin steel to make the motor mounts for the front. Uh, that would be turning left, turning right, acceleration and braking. So basically they're going to mount up here somewhere. They're going to push the big rod on the top, but they have to mount to the mid frame. And so they have to have clearance between uh, the bottom frame and the mid frame, which we can do that. That's not a problem. But uh, guys, I don't want to leave you in the lurch. So I do want to say thanks to everybody who did the super thanks thing. Um, just a couple bucks here and there. It's, it's helping me out and it really helps me you know keep keep doing this stuff you know mentally because uh i got a decent rig to run right now i think this one's actually going to be a little bit better um it's definitely going to look cooler because it's going to have some paint and stuff like that all right guys till next week or till next video at least you got some work to think think about think about how to do it this gives me plenty of clearance Potentiometer is going to sit right off the top of here. Yeah, man, if you want something bad enough, you're, you'll find a way to do it. That's, that's the thing. If you want something bad enough, you're going to figure out a way to get it done. You're going to figure out a way to either buy it or build it. I prefer building it. Um, still haven't decided on the DD wheel. A lot of good suggestions out there, guys. I'm still trying to really hone in on that 10 pound thing. Um, so the CSL DD, that's 10 pounds, but apparently they're not, apparently I'd have to buy a used one because they don't stock them right now. They're having supply problems or something like that. And I just can't buy one. Um, so I'd have to step up to something that's, that's similar 10 pounds would be the Simicube. Sima Cube 2 and it's that's pretty expensive it's 20 newton meters which is probably way more than I need you know because I'm an old guy but uh, I don't know but I can't imagine a DD1 sitting on top of this rig these things are freaking massive and yeah they weigh 20 pounds too um, so still kind of perplexed keep sending your ideas because Man, I was ready to pull the trigger. Uh, I just, it is what it is. All right, guys, check back later. Dave out. <laughs>